Okay, welcome back. Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen. It is your buddy Obi back on the mic once again, and we are here yet again for another year of weekly car showcases and weekly upload update videos for you for WWE 2K19. And as you can clearly see on your screen, I've been quite a busy little beaver over the course of the last week or so, week and a half, give or take, considering the fact that I did get the digital deluxe edition. So I've been at it four days earlier than launch. But as we scroll down here, you can see that we've got at least 12 to 13 cars done already for 8, 12, 13. There for you. So, what we're going to be doing here is I'll first be showcasing the five that are currently available on Community Creations at this present moment and show you which ones they are, tell you how long they'll be on there. And from there, we'll go into the rest and we'll get into future releases and things of that nature. But before I do that, since I've obviously got your attention now, I have to start off by making a very, very, very big announcement regarding 2K19, the XWA, and the future. Yes, I'm already looking towards the future. We haven't even gotten this over a week yet. And that's kind of the gist of it. Um, it took a lot of debating and deliberation, but I've decided in actuality that WWE 2K19 will in fact be, at least at this point, the final stop for the XWA and View Japan Pro Wrestling as far as my original content is concerned. The shows, the uh, pay-per-views, the XWA live events, things of that nature. And the reason why I've came to this decision is over the course of the past couple of days, I've realized that, well, it was even before that, recreating all of these cores takes a very, very, very long time to do. And that's time that's taken away from me being able to actually make the actual content, that being the shows and so on. And it really hit me over the course of this last year because there was so much that I wanted to do, but I just didn't have the time to because I was continually having to recreate and update and re-upload cause, especially in the case of all those ones that glitched, that had to have all of their images re-uploaded and reapplied. That took a lot of time away for me to be able to actually focus on what it is that I'm really wanting to do, which is the shows and the storytelling and such like that. So I've decided one more time to go through this long and arduous process of recreating everyone for the XWA. And then after that, that's it, basically. 2K19 will be the last stand. This is where I am planting my flag for the foreseeable future. Now, does that mean that I'm no longer going to be getting WWE games? No, it doesn't. I will still be getting future titles, but those will just be for general gameplay and I might recreate a handful of creations, mostly my flagship cause, on those games. But it won't be for shows. I won't be taking requests or anything like that. It'll just be, here it is, here you go. And uh, the only way I see that differentiating is if 2K20 has some serious innovations. And I'm talking more than just a roster update. I'm talking about complete game-changing mechanics that blow people's minds, that blows my mind specifically and says to me, okay, we can do this again one more time because it'll be worth it this time from all the new stuff that you'll be able to do. Now granted, there's a lot of good stuff in 2K19, mainly the roster updates, but also some subtle little nuances little things that I like that they brought back or they put in that makes the creation process a whole lot easier. And 
And it was that in conjunction to the fact that we have a very, very big roster in 2K19 that prompted me to go ahead in 2K19. Because if this was just the same old rinky-dink roster update, chances are I probably would have stuck with 2K18 for the XWA and been in that same boat that I say I'm going to be in next year, this year, if that makes any sense. So, there you have it. That's the uh, situation at this present moment. We'll just have to wait and see in the very near future or distant future, since we're talking next year here, whether or not that's going to change. But at this present moment, you can consider it to be 2K19 to be where the flag stands as far as the XWA goes. So, yeah, that's where we are at right now. So, without further ado, let's get into looking at some creations here, shall we? We're going to kick things off here with arguably the most hated female in the entire Diamond Division, a.k.a. Alexia Leone, a.k.a. the leader of the Blood Diamonds, a.k.a. the personal assistant slash liaison to Vice President Tyson Blackheart. And of course, if you watched the last episode of Girl Fight, then you know exactly what it is that I'm talking about and why it is that she is so loathed and despised by the rest of the roster as well as the XW universe as a whole. So, yeah. She's a bad girl in every single sense of the word here. You will notice that I've actually changed her attire like completely from last year's game and this is one of those instances where I just wanted to do something different with the character's look and not go with the uh, kind of hybrid more sporty type of attire that I use for a lot of my other females I wanted to go with something a little bit more uh, traditional looking you can see obviously that it still has the same uh, design elements as last year's version, specifically the, uh, the kind of uh, tribal Illuminati triangle thing going here that is obviously her uh, arm tattoo that was converted into kind of a designed logo for a little extra effect here. Placed strategically along the tights and the knee pads. I was going to put some on the kick pads, but that would make things look a little too busy you don't want to do too much sometimes less is more and I'm gonna say that a lot over the course of these videos here because you're going to notice that some of the designs some of the layouts that I put on the tires are very very simplistic but effective nonetheless so yeah we accessorize here on the top here with the uh, Stephanie McMahon chains going on as platinum folks not silver this is uh, a woman who's got a lot of influence so naturally that includes a lot of money as well even though it's Blackheart money this time and not Leone money if you've uh, paid any attention then you already know her backstory the fact that our family's uh, fortune dried up and she was basically broke and disheveled and was found by Tyson Blackheart and absorbed into his organization. She for whatever reason blamed Kamiko for not helping her in her time of need which of course prompted her subsequent return to the XWA and you pretty much know everything else that's gone on after that. The question is what goes on with her going forward? That you're going to have to stay tuned and watch the upcoming episodes of Girl Fights and so on to see for yourself. But um, yeah, not much else to say here about the uh, primary attire, so let's have ourselves a look at the entrance gear oh, yeah. for it. The entrance gear really has her looking kind of, uh, how you say, bossy 
so to speak. Mainly because it's the top there is obviously the uh, Stephanie McMahon leather vest that she's worn on several occasions accompanying her husband out to the ring. And uh, obviously it creates a certain looking combination with the, uh, the chains going on there. And we finish the look off with the uh, prototypical huge celebrity glasses, as I like to call them. Celebrity shades that just really kind of hammers home the fact that Miss Leone here is in charge. Definitely the, uh, the brains of the outfit known as the Blood Diamonds. And uh, see on the back here we've got the red triangle again after I did some darkening of the actual logo that was on the back of it and uh, yeah another example of not doing much but what it is that I did do worked well synergized and we got ourselves a brand spanking new looking attire here that really I think captures the, the character of Alexia and uh, that's pretty much it for attire number one so now we'll look at the alternate okay so attire number two is one that I'm really proud of one that I'm really excited about because this in actuality is the look that I envisioned uh, Alexia to have when I decided that I was going to bring her back. It had been obviously a very, very long time since I actually created or recreated her. She, for those of you who don't know, was at first a member of a team known as Class Act, along with Kamiko, which was basically the uh, quintessential schoolgirl Japanese schoolgirl type team, basically. So, yeah, she was a face at one time. Uh, one of the uh, super baby faces, which, of course, then led to the whole, you know, um, fall from grace thing that I spoke of earlier and set her down the path to darkness. So, originally, I wanted to bring her back in kind of this uh, mob princess type of persona still a heel but not in the capacity that she is in right now she wouldn't have been you know involved with Blackheart she would have been on her own but still a bad guy so this was the type of look that I wanted to have for her in that persona if you will the only problem was the fact that they didn't have a top and that's the crazy part here. Something this simple as a dress shirt with a tie on it. A, they didn't have a preset one for years. Like this is the first time that this piece is here in the game since the WWE games hit the last, the, the, the current generation of consoles. And in the previous generation of consoles, you couldn't even make a combination like this because the polygon count would have been too high. You couldn't put together a shirt and a tie on a female car with the suspenders. The parts were there, but you could not put them together, which is ridiculous in my opinion, if I'm being completely honest. I mean, there's a lot of things and a lot of looks that you want to make, but you are very limited to, to making because of the game's own limitations and sad to say that's still the case even to this day in the current generation where you think it wouldn't be a problem because the power of consoles nowadays is 10 times better than they were in the previous generation with the PlayStation 3 or the PlayStation 2 or the original PlayStation for that matter but that's the situation that we're in. So it's been that long since I've not been able to create this look here. 
and that makes me that much more happy the fact that I am now able to create this look here. So, that's what we got, basically. And it's a pretty simple design, yet again, less is more, especially in this case. We gave her the, uh, the, the studded fighting gloves, those page gloves, and again, the uh, same triangle logos along the sides of the, uh, the skirt, because I wanted to have some a little bit of design in it, still make it look somewhat like a wrestling attire, even though it's obviously a lot closer to just being straight up street clothes. But yeah, you see the end result. Looks pretty darn cool, and yeah, like I said, it, it gives off this kind of a mafioso type of vibe, but at the same time, being kind of, sort of, reminiscent to Kamiko's actual ring attires, the uh, the school ghoul, the school girl, I said school ghoul, that sounds like an anime right there, <laughs> the school girl look that she has kept consistently over the years, it's just a different application of that, you know, kind of a variation almost, and that would have been the thing between them. Except now that thing is something a little more different and a lot more complex. But nonetheless, it's still the whole good sister, bad sister type of thing. And right now the bad sister is winning in a big way because she took her good sister out by cracking her ankle into a million pieces. So yeah, we're going to see how that all plays out. I already know how it's going to play out, I just, you know, obviously haven't been able to put it into presentation yet, but you will see, and things are definitely going to get interesting in this whole storyline here. Trust me on that. Anyway, her uh, entrance attire is just basically the same celebrity glasses that you saw in the entrance gear for attire number one, so there's no need for me to really show that, and yeah. She is online, available for download right now on Community Creations, as are her uh, compatriots within the Blood Diamonds, which I will show you right now. Next up on the list, we've got the Enforcer, the Muscle, aka Arlene Driver. And as you can see, not much at all has changed on her aside from a couple of small minor subtleties in the attire as far as how she looked from last year to this year. The uh, brassiere we've got going on I believe this is uh, Sonia Deville's top with the, uh, the metal studs there. I liked the way that that looked and it came out pretty uniformly uh, similar to the page shorts here again with the studs so I put those two together and the end result came out pretty dang cool if I do say so myself and then we added the uh, beware slash barbed wire uh, graphics that I created last year just one-to-one -one conversions there pretty much almost the same placement and uh, used the emboss function to give it more of a 3D kind of puffed out look against the leather texture to which if you are using a leather texture you want the logos to actually pop you out that way it doesn't look like it's just painted on even though you can get away with painted on I mean I've seen airbrushed stuff on leather that looks pretty cool but I want my stuff to look more uh, three-dimensional kind of like it's made of leather itself and it gives off that kind of texture too being the fact that the, the graphics themselves gave off kind of a texture as well. And uh, before I continue on, if I must say, uh, the, the texture finishes that they have for certain uh, elements, logos, and obviously the uh, fabric surfaces of uh, parts like clothing is way, way better this year than it was last year as far as I can tell especially the leather here because you can see 
just from looking at it up close that it actually looks like a leather finish on everything that you set it there on. Uh, last year's leather pattern, if you will, looked kind of more like pleather. Like, it still looked leathery, but it looked a lot more plasticky. Like, there was a bit too much shine on it, in my personal opinion. Whereas this has, like, just enough but then also you've got that kind of like bumpy finish to it that makes it look exactly like it's leather. 100% leather upper. So nice little touch there, good changes. That's one of the examples of those uh, things that they've improved on from last year's game that I kinda dig. So yeah, let's scroll down here to show the boots. Another highlight here. Those are the uh, rain boots that I just basically converted into like jack boots, biker boots if you will, with the leather finish as well as the uh, buckles there, which is an asset that I created with Photoshop. Uh, just putting together some things just for the sake of uh, accessorizing because I got tired of using other people's stuff that may or may not get re-uploaded. Uh, I remember a lot of times that I would use like buckles and straps and stuff like that from other people's cars, specifically the uh, Nick Virtue car, shout out to Nick Virtue of course, and I just thought to myself, you know what, it'd be more productive for me to just go ahead and make my own stuff, that way I have it ready instead of waiting for a release that might not happen or you know, someone's look might change from year to year. You're never too sure. So I went ahead and did that. And that also has been uploaded onto Community Creations. I'm gonna do that a lot more this year. Uh, make it a habit of uploading just simple assets for people because I noticed that when I uploaded this same graphic last year, a lot of people downloaded it which also incidentally chopped into the amount of uh, downloads I needed to increase my rank up to diamond rank, which of course gives you five more slots in which you can upload stuff. So yeah, for those people out there who like to uh, keep all of their designs and stuff like that all close to the chest and everything, I can understand your uh, standpoint. You don't want your stuff to be copied, but you're losing out on downloads when you keep stuff to yourself just saying so yeah that and a lot of other assets have been uploaded to community creations logos simple designs I have like a lace pattern there for people who might want to use like uh, stockings or hosiery on uh, females that maybe might not like the stuff that's already in game or can't use it because of certain combinations Remember what I said about not being able to do stuff still that you should be able to do? Anyway, kind of ranting there. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, entrance attire for gear number one, shall we? So for the entrance gear, we've got the uh, Ronda Rousey slash Roddy Piper leather jacket with the same elements as before the Beware barbed wire logos. Now, I did not put the leather uh, texture on this because it's already leather. But you can see side by side, or should I say top on bottom, or side by side if you will, if you will, how close the uh, leather texture that you can set is to something that is actually leather. Really, really similar. Very, very nice effect. Now, like I said, this is Ronda Rousey's jacket. And as you might already know by now, Ronda Rousey was pre-order bonus. So if you did not pre-order 2K19, then you might not be able to get your hands on this driver here because of that. And yeah, that's a continued thing. I will use DLC content for my creations if it's relevant. 
I'm aware that there is a regular leather jacket in the game as well. At least I am now. But I was just too lazy to change the jacket. And it looks good on her. This big bulky jacket on a big bulky female. Like Miss Driver is because obviously she is one of my uh, power types. The likes of Sarah Warfield, Jamie Fury, and so on. So yeah, she's a big girl. And it looks great on her, so, you know, we're going to stick with that. She's got kind of this uh, Lady Terminator vibe going on here, which is perfect considering that's exactly what her persona is like, sort of. I mean, she takes people out that she's ordered to take people out. And then you got this biker look, and then you got the fact that she's, you know, a, a muscle girl and everything, so, yeah. You know, if you gender swapped uh, the Terminator, the Arnold Schwarzenegger version, she would probably look something very, very close to Arlene Driver here and be just as destructive. So, yeah, let's go ahead and look at the second attire now. So, the secondary attire is a little more uh, close to a traditional wrestling gear just like uh, the primary attire of Alexia's. And again, we have an example of an accidental and incidental combination that came out looking really, really good. And in this instance, I'm talking about the uh, Sonya Deville top with the leather and studs in combination with the Dana Brooke tights, again, with the leather and studs. We added the leather texture, colored the studs, gave them a metallic finish to make them all universal, and boy did it all come out universal. Like, really universal. That looks like a legit wrestling gear right there. I mean, all my wrestling gears look legit, but I'm just saying, the, the way that this came out in tandem with each other looks quite impressive. And, uh... Yeah, I didn't expect for it to come out that look, looking good, but that's just how it is sometimes, and I do love it when that type of stuff happens, where you're thinking, will this work? And it does work, and it works extremely well, so, yeah. Um, let me scroll up to the top here real quick so you can take a look at the uh, tattoos. Again, pretty much the same placement as it's always been. That's the reason why I probably have not elaborated on it a little too much, considering the fact that if you've watched the last couple of years of me, uh, you know, creating the character, then you pretty much know what it is to expect. But you can see for yourself, got the barbed wire thing going on along the uh, neck, the arms, and the uh, heart has the uh, barbed wire wrapped around a heart dripping blood you can actually see more of the tattoo this year because they actually have a little bit more revealing tops not stuff that completely covers the uh the cleavage of the female form and the cleavage actually exists on the female form like they actually have boobs now i don't know what you called whatever it was that was on their chest last year but you n oftentimes had to actually use a texture to create cleavage to make them actually look like a woman's breasts. That's not the case this year. On certain tops, you can actually see it. And yeah, it's, it's a good move, a good call on 2K to you know actually realize that maybe there might not just be kids playing these games and we probably want our stuff models and so on and so forth to actually look real you know instead of making people have to suspend reality for the sake of being afraid that a couple of horny 12 year olds are going to try to make naked calls like come on now so yeah good on them for that anyway let's go ahead and take a look at the entrance attire for this one so we've got the sleeveless leather vest combination going on here for attire number two, which pretty much creates the same exact effect that the 
long leather jacket does for number one. Again, it just kind of accentuates that whole uh, female biker slash lady terminator type of vibe for the character, which works. It's perfect. And there's not much else for me to say about that. So I'll just uh, spin her around a couple of times so you can see the combination of the logos and how everything is put together. But you probably already know that by now if you downloaded her because she is also up on Community Creations as we speak. So yeah, every group needs its enforcer and this one belongs to the Blood Diamonds and she likes to do a lot of damage, particularly putting people through tables. Just ask Madison Starr about that. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've really hurt a lot of people since I've put them all together, haven't they? Well, uh, expect more of that in the not-so-distant future. And rounding out the Blood Diamonds is the Red Queen, Cordelia. Now, a little word of warning to those of you who might have downloaded the previous version that I had uploaded. Obviously, there have been some changes made to her appearance and her attire. So, go ahead and get the current version of Cordelia here. The only thing that's really changed on her is her appearance. The moveset and entrance remain the same. Well, actually, I think I probably changed the entrance a bit. I used a couple of Alistair Black elements in that entrance to kind of uh, help to accentuate the mystery re behind this character. And yeah, there is a whole lot of mystery behind this character. The biggest of which being, will I ever come up with a freaking attire that I will stay with? Because, uh, <laughs> At this present moment, she's still kind of a work in progress, at least from the appearance side of things. Um, I just not, I, I just haven't been able to double down on a look for her that I like and that I want consistent. Like, do I want her to be in wrestling gear? Do I want her to be more in like a street clothes type of assassin gear or what? Not sure. And I'm just kind of ad-libbing at this point. But this particular look here, I think I'm kind of happy with. I was trying to go with something similar to how it is that she looked like in last year's game. But then I realized a lot of these accessories that I was using would have blocked off the uh, tattoo elements that I've added onto her. And yes, she's got a whole lot more ink going on than she did last year where she had none so yeah there's that thing well she did have the back tattoo these kind of evil wings so there's that but obviously she's uh she's added on some more parts some more pieces here so that's a very very uh, uh prominent element on her uh, visage if you will and then aside from that almost similar style look to how it is that she was last year. She's an aggressive type, a fighter, using a lot of uh, martial arts slash strong style moves. Kind of in the vein of a uh, Sonya, Sonya Robbins. There's a lot of parallels between those two characters actually. I have them as being uh, rivals or enemies if you will. I just haven't been able to build on that as much as I would like to, which I hope that the uh, decision that I've made, that I explained at the start of this video, is going to alleviate, and I'll be able to do more with that. And I will also be able to get more into detail with the uh, backstory of this particular character, to which it is going to be a doozy. I will tell you that much, without spoiling anything. She's not just a mysterious, silent vagabond, if you will. There's a lot to her that you don't know, and a lot of other people in my universe don't know. 
that when she does divulge the uh, the news, the information, basically when she speaks, she's going to shake up a whole lot of things within the XWA. Not just the Diamond Division, but everyone. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, right now, all you need to know is that, like I said, this is an updated version of her. Uh, at this point, this is the only attire I have for her. There is no entrance gear. Well, yeah, I mean, she has secondary look. I mean, she's not going to be walking out nothing. But you can see here that there is no specific entrance gear. And I have not yet created an alternate attire for her because I can't figure one out yet. So, yeah, chances are she will probably be re-uploaded again at some point. But at this point here, we could call this uh, Cordelia 1.5, where it is that I was happy enough to be able to upload what it is that I had as a semi-complete work uh, for you guys to be able to um, put her together with the other two as your full Blood Diamonds faction. So yeah, stay tuned to future videos to see what I do with these other two slots here. Or one slot. I guess two slots because I do want to try to make a, uh, what you call, entrance attire for her as well. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, I will close this out by putting on screen the team stable information for you to add the Blood Diamonds in full officially to your own game. And yeah, as I said before, all three of these ladies are available now on Community Creation. So go ahead and grab them, put them together, and see what kind of damage they can do on your game. Hopefully, they don't hurt too many people. Next on the list is the 2K19 version of the Lioness. Aurora Cellini, aka the sole female member of the Lions Pride Camp, founded and led, of course, by the King of Sports, Magnus von Schwartz. And if we scroll up, you can notice a very, very uh, noticeable difference between last year's version and this year's, or the fact that she got a haircut, a very, very big haircut. Now, there's a real actual reason I decided to go with this shorter hair, and then there's an in-story context reason that I went with the shorter hair. I'll go with the real reason first. I was just basically scrolling through the hairs as I was trying to find that Emma hair that I was going to put on her originally, and then I saw this one here and thought, you know, that looked cool, and I kind of dig chicks with short hair. So we colored it black and yeah, it looked really, really cool, in, at least in my opinion. Might not be your thing, but it's my cause, so whatever. And yeah, we went with it. It also kind of lends itself in that it, it makes her look a little bit more sportier, in my opinion. It also shows off a lot more of her uh, physical form, to which obviously, as I said last year, she is another power type, so she's well built, to say the least. So then, then there's the uh, the story context for this change. That being the fact that the last time that she was in a ring, she lost in the quarterfinals of the Warfield Invitational to Sierra K by submission. And this kind of woke up a fire in her to where she had to improve to where it is that she was not going to lose in that way again. Not to anyone. So she doubled down on her training, which included a lot more focus on submission wrestling. And that also included just kind of a change in her, uh, her mentality to where she 
went so far as to chop off those long raven colored locks of hers just to uh, reduce more distractions for her and her goal of improving herself and becoming a better competitor than she was so there's that it's kind of a realistic type of deal because a lot of times when some people go through uh, major changes in their lives they start a new job they break up you know a long relationship or things of that nature they'll do drastic changes to their appearance just to kind of like reset themselves at least from a sort of mental capacity like you'll cut your hair you'll grow a beard you'll change your hair color stuff like that so that's kind of what it is that we have going on here with Miss Cellini the other change aside from her hair is the fact that I've given her the accolade as a finishing maneuver that she'll be calling the lioness lock to go with the Lioness Driver, which of course is the landslide. I had been using the F5, aka the Broken Will, as her alternate finisher, but now she's kind of more evolving into a style of her own, as opposed to mimicking the style of Magnus, to which obviously I originally just basically swapped Magnus's entire moveset onto her. So she was just basically a female Magnus von Schwartz. Nowadays, I'm doing a little bit more to differentiate her from her mentor, if you will. And the same thing goes for the entire Lions Pride camp, that being Jesse Risen and Rob Cosmos along with her, to give them their own little nuances and specialties that differentiate themselves from Magnus. So, there's that. Anyway, scroll in, take a look at the uh, textures and all the designs we got going on here. I decided to go with the uh, two-dimensional look and not puff them out because I wanted them to look more like a uh, sportier type of one-piece thing. I could change that if I wanted to, just to see how it looks, but... But right now, it's not really hurting the look. We got the uh, Lioness logo with Queen of Sport and her name along the top and the bottom. Same elements as last year, as is, of course, the Lion's Pride logo and a patch that represents that specific team member's country of origin. That's something that I'm going to keep consistent across all the members of Lion's Pride. It's a thing. They're an international faction. And Magnus prides himself on the fact that he doesn't, you know, specialize in one specific style. He wants to have a group of competitors that incorporates all styles of wrestling. So, it doesn't matter if it's Puro, it's Euro, if it's American, Amateur, whatever. It's all about putting things together and creating the best, most powerful style of wrestling that can be possibly contemplated is the ultimate goal of Magnus and Lion's Pride. And thus far, I'd say he's on a good start here. He's doing pretty good based on the uh, company that he is keeping. Let's scroll down to the uh, trunks, shorts, if you will. The logo again, Lion's Pride. Really simple look. Another example of less being more especially considering the fact that this is more like a uh, sportier type of uniform look. So, you know, you don't want those to look too crazy. You know, then they look like a freaking NHL jersey or something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Keep it simple. Sometimes that's the best course of action. Scroll down to the boots. Got the logo there again. Not much else to say. You know, it's just... Her look, it's a consistent look, in it one, and it's one that works perfectly for the character. So, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Anyway, let's go ahead and have a look at the walkout attire now. And so, yeah, 
with the uh, atypical Lions Pride warm-up jacket that all members of the camp wear, you can really see how the short hair decision really helps things because now you can actually see the logo along the back of the jacket a lot better than you could when it was blocked by all that long hair. So again, same design elements as I've always used on the front again, the Lions Pride logo along with the country of origin patch and then on the back you've got the actual logo for that specific person. Like I said, that's something that I've done and will continue to do for Lions Pride. There's no real need to change anything up because this is one of those situations, unlike Cordelia, where their looks are pretty much finalized. I've got them down to a point where I know how I want them to look, and it's a very, very consistent look. Especially in the case of uh, Rob Cosmos, because you, if you've seen his last appearance on XWA Live, his looks changed dramatically from the first version that I created, and I like how that came out as well. So, you know, uh, Lion's Pride is pretty much one of those uh, groups of creations of mine that are just going to be easy to recreate because there's not really much change or variation involved in them aside from their initial placements as far as logos and what kind of attire it is that they are going to be wearing. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at the alternate attire for Miss Cellini now. And so the alternate attire, not much variation aside from two logos, one on the front and one on the back. Of course, on the front, we've got the uh, Queen of Sport written in script there. That, of course, is her moniker, kind of a, uh, an homage or a play off of the King of Sport nickname that Magnus von Schwartz uses amongst a couple of others, the last lion, the German shooter, etc. And then on the back of the trunks, we've got an alternate of the lioness logo that has the name of her finishing maneuver, or her primary finishing maneuver, the lioness driver, as opposed to her actual name. Not much else changes aside from that, because like I said before, why change what's already looking good? Anyway, we'll go ahead and look at the alternate entrance attire now. And this is by far the coolest entrance attire that I have on any of my females right now because it's just simply put a hoodie with the hood up. You don't see too many females out there rocking this type of gear, especially in pro wrestling because it's more about, you know, I guess you could say being decorative, ornate. There's nothing decorative or ornate about Aurora Cellini. She is as down to business as you can possibly get. And nothing gets more down to business than a walkout hoodie. Kind of has a bit of a, uh, an MMA type of vibe to it, as a matter of fact. You can pretty much see the elements here. I've contemplated maybe adding something along the uh, sleeves, like a separate patch of some kind. Maybe something to add on also to the jackets themselves. But that's a work in progress. Maybe like a, a crest of some sort or whatever. Like an extra logo. Just to kind of be a little more decorative. But not so much because it's not really that necessary considering the Lion's Pride look is a very, very distinct one at this point. So yeah, I had this on her when she had long hair, and it looked good. It looks just as good with the short hair. So yeah, that's going to do it. That is the Lioness for 2K19. Expect big things for her to happen over the course of uh, this year. And going forward, because I'm not using years anymore, because at this point, 2K19 is the last game I'm going to be using her in. So, yeah. But from a story context, she's going to be uh, rising 
in the ranks very, very significantly, along with quite a few others. I plan on uh, incorporating this uh, new generation of cause a lot more into the, the main happenings of what's going on within the XWA. And Aurora is going to be a centerpiece in the Diamond Division, as you will see in the future. But in the present, she is available for download right now. So go ahead and grab her and uh, enjoy the suplexes. And from the new generation, we close things out with the old guard. And by old guard, I mean flagship. Not old timer, but someone who has been a consistent part of my call roster from the time that I started creating cause, or female cause, anyway. This, of course, is the 2019 version of the current reigning, defending XWA Diamond Champion, the Hellcat, Haley Jonas. And, uh, as you would expect, not much has changed from her look last year to this year at least from outside appearances the exception being of course the top half because thanks to absolution we finally get a short crop tank top for females again we have not had a part like this just like the dress shirt and tie since the previous previous generation of games I'm talking PlayStation 2 we're talking SmackDown versus Raw and the regular SmackDown series. That's how long it's been since we had this simple little article of clothing here. And yeah, that's that's a little weird if you ask me. Obviously, she's rocked crop t-shirts. She's rocked the AJ Lee t-shirt. Well, while that was available, it still is. And uh, sometimes the Lita t-shirts. I mean, I've always had it so that she's worn tops that show the midriff. That being the, uh, the abs, the tummy and stuff like that. But the t-shirts, they unfortunately block off a lot of the ink that she has. And obviously ink is one of her stronger, more noticeable qualities especially over the years as I've added more onto her layout. So this year, with the Absolution t-shirt, you get to see all of it, or at least the majority of it, in all of its splendor. The uh, back tattoo, obviously, uses the wrap function, and the effect that it gave is almost an incidental and accidental effect that I just stuck with because it works extremely well because it looks as if she's got one entire elaborate piece of tattoo artwork wrapped around the entire top half of her torso wrapped around the entire top half of her torso from the neck all the way down to the wrists everything else pretty much remains exactly where it has been for the past couple of recreations of her in the current generation of uh, WWE games. Got the wing skull going on on the sides of the uh, shorts. Obviously that's an element that she shares with her older brother Tom. Don't really know if that has any significance. It was just a piece that I put on just to make the, uh, the bottoms look a little less uh, bland compared to all this work going on the top side of her. And then the combination of uh, combat boots, knee pads, and fishnets to complete that whole uh, kind of grungy, hybrid, uh, punk rock type of look. Now you'll notice the logo here on knee pads that weren't there before. I'm going to get into a little bit more detail on that when I show it to you along the entrance attire. Let's just go ahead and get to that right now then, shall we? So for her walkout gear, we again have the uh, Alexa Bliss hoodie. And 
and we'll swing it to the back. And this time, I've blocked off the little Miss Bliss logo with that same exact logo, as opposed to the uh, Hellcat t-shirt logo. And you can see here, the Academy of Pure Violence. This is a logo I got off of um, Shutterstock, I believe. And it's something that I want to work with, because it obviously has the sound of being some kind of camp or school or academy or group and if you follow my work at all you know that I have all of the above in some way shape or form within my universe. You've got camps like Lion's Pride, you've got factions slash groups like Villainy, the Blood Diamonds, Paragon, etc. You've got dojos slash schools like the Togo Dojo and the School of Hardcore. So I'm thinking maybe this could be the Jonas siblings attempt at starting their own school slash discipline which would be focused specifically on that rougher, more aggressive, almost street fighting style of wrestling that they both use. Something to the tune of like a Stone Cold Steve Austin or a Bam Bam Bigelow, you know, Randy Orton. Uh, something a little more brutal than is the norm in professional wrestling. The only question is, who the heck would be a part of it aside from them? And that right there is my work in progress. That's my major project at this point. Trying to find people maybe even if it comes down to making people who would be a part of this academy of pure violence and obviously they would have to be a very very special and very very specific type of individual to be involved in a group that has this type of um, motivation if you will so yeah there's that going on there anyway Everything else pretty cut and dry, so we'll go ahead and take a look at attire number two now. And so the second attire is basically a variation of the secondary attire that she's had in the last year's version of the game. The uh, long Lita pants, got the uh, double leather belt thing going on here, just because I like how this long belt looks like. I actually want the pants to be a uh, traditional camouflage color, but the problem is the way that the uh, patterns look like when it is that I stretch them out, it doesn't look as connected. I mean, I might experiment with different camo patterns and see how those look like, and maybe that might call for an updated version or an updated upload at some point. But for right now, the combination that I got going on here looks pretty darn good. Scroll up to the top. And again, we've got that alternate absolution shirt, tank top, if you will. This is the one that Mandy Rose will wear. That's really, really cut off on the sides. Kind of shows off some side boob there. Not prominently, but you can definitely see exactly where it is that I said that Haley's ink runs deep, like really deep here. And you can just suspend in, uh, you, you can suspend imagination as to how it stays on her without things kind of, you know, malfunctioning as far as the wardrobe is concerned. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we got the uh, Academy of Pure Violence going on that logo again on the front and you can see that I put the, uh, the tap out gloves the uh, MMA gloves on the secondary attire as opposed to the primary because I have those uh, Ronda Rousey fighting gloves on the primary attire with some added extras so kind of mixing the old with the new here for this particular look and uh, yeah it's all to good effect. Um, Haley has always been one of those designs 
again, where I pretty much know exactly what it is that I'm going to do with her. And the only differentiation that I do is maybe a different piece of clothing, like a t-shirt or a logo on a t-shirt, jacket, things of that nature. Aside from that, she's pretty much consistent year to year. And uh, yeah, this year, it's just uh, another year at the office for the Hellcat, even though things are going to be shaken up at, as far as she's concerned as well. Um, there's going to be some changes going on in the Diamond Division, and uh, th these events are going to affect everyone from top on down. And that's the, all the information that I can give you at this point without going into spoilers yet. So look forward to that on the channel. And as far as Miss Jonas here, you can look forward to her in your game once you download her right now. And we will take a closer look at all that in the final section of this video. So, our first five cause for download right now, prominently on your screen, and quite a few people have gotten their hands on them thus far. Take a closer look here at the details. You've got Haley Jonas. We've got Aurora Cellini. Again. And then the Blood Diamonds. Alexia Leone. Arlene Driver. I do not know why their thumbnails are different in the menu as opposed to in the game. They have completely different poses in the game than you see here. Uh, let me know in the comments if it's actually these poses or if it's the ones that I actually set in the call menu that is in the actual downloaded versions of them. And then we've got the updated version of Cordelia, which, like I said, only has one attire, but is complete otherwise, pending further design work by my part to be re-uploaded at some other point. Uh, just for your FYI, because some of you have probably been wondering this yourself, as I have as well, the exclamation point that you see on the uh, bottom left side of their uh, profile box there indicates that that particular person, I believe, has content that needs to be unlocked, basically. So we're talking uh, VC content, that being the stuff that you have to unlock with the uh, VC credits or VC bucks, whatever it is that you want to call them. Because obviously, as you can see on the top right hand side of your screen, I don't use them much. <laughs> I buy the accelerator with the uh, season pass and just unlock everything with that. Like, I barely actually play the actual game, which is something I plan on changing, like, at some point, but not at the present moment because I got a whole lot more cause to make and complete and upload for you guys. So, yeah. Let's see how fast I can get to the next rank here. I've already got 657 downloads. That does not obviously include just the cause here. As we will take a look at our uh, designs. Like I said, I put up some assets for you guys. Supreme logo there. For those of you who like that brand or, you know, want to use that. There goes the uh, belt pattern for your attires. Also got an Adidas logo that I've used on uh, Jamie Fury. You'll be seeing her in the next video. And some studs to basically use anywhere on attires. So expect more assets like this. And obviously some tattoo designs, some universal logos like brand logos, Supreme, Adidas, Under Armour. I'm actually going to be putting up a uh, suplex gear uh, logo for anybody who's interested in maybe rocking that brand on their walkout gear as well that should probably be up by the time this video is out as well so you're not seeing it here but you will see it when you check out this screen and take a look at what it is that i've uploaded so yeah there's that there's the arenas and the shows to go with them as well there's the xwa live arena 
which you've already seen as I put out my first XWA Live video for 2K19 prior to this one. So that is now available along with the show with all the graphics and everything like that in it. And then of course there is XWA Girl Fight 6. This is how the new look is going to be for 2K19 onward. So those are available all for download right now on Community Creations. Go ahead and grab them. Search tags, as always, are going to be 3XCAW. That's the number 3, followed by the letters XCAW, and of course the letters XWA. And that's going to do it for the first weekly CAW showcase of 2K19. There will be one following this soon. These five cars are going to be made available until we'll say at least Wednesday at the latest, possibly Tuesday, to which afterwards I will then upload five new cars replacing these. That will be the five that you will see in the next video, which like I said will include Jamie Fury and some others that I've just recently completed. All the cars that you saw at the very start of this video are 100% done as far as entrances, movesets, and the like. It's just a matter of being able to update and upload them. So, yeah. The, the, the grind begins anew. And we'll go from there. Thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure that you like the video if you found it enjoyable or informative. Subscribe for more gaming goodness, core videos, showcases, tutorials, and of course the XWA shows themselves, which I will hopefully be getting around to doing in a much more consistent basis now that I've made the decision that I've made. So, fingers crossed there. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the love. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, this is Obi signing off. See ya!